What's going on everyone? Tao with Big Bro Security here back with another video and in today's video we are going to be discussing the eLearn Security Junior Penetration Tester exam, what my thoughts are on it, what the training is like for it, and whether I think you should take this exam as an aspiring pen tester in 2021. Let's get started. Okay, so this video is going to be broken down into three big sections. They are first the exam itself, so what it tests you on, skills you need to pass it, etc. Then the training and finally my recommendations for you. So I'll leave little things down in the description below that let you kind of skip through the video if you need to, but I would love it if you watch the whole video. Also, if you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. So first off, the exam itself. According to eLearn Security's website, this exam tests you on TCP IP, IP routing, LAN protocols and devices, HTTP and web technologies, essential penetration testing processes and methodologies, basic vulnerability assessment of networks, basic vulnerability assessment of web applications, exploitation with Metasploit, simple web application manual exploitation, basic information gathering and reconnaissance, and simple scanning and profiling the target. Some helpful skills that are listed on eLearn Security's website are a deep understanding of networking concepts, simple manual web application security assessment and exploitation, basic vulnerability assessment of networks using Metasploit for performing simple attacks web application manual exploitation through attack vectors, ability to perform protocol analysis of a traffic capture, understanding of information gathering techniques, and understanding of the penetration testing process. So what I just read to you was the list of skills that you're going to want to need or have to be able to pass this exam and what specifically the exam tests you on. Now that I've kind of read that, which is from eLearn Security's website, I'm gonna go over my experience with this exam and go over more specifics of the structure of this exam in case you're interested. So this exam is a non-proctored remote exam. So basically you can take this exam from anywhere I would recommend having a good quiet dedicated space for it however it is three days long so you're going to have plenty of time to complete this exam there's no time crunch like there is with something like the oscp this is three days long so obviously you're going to be sleeping during some of the exam time unless you happen to finish it really fast and then obviously you won't need to i took the full three days for this exam however the second day of the exam i didn't really do much of anything on it i mostly worked on the first and the third day on this exam you take this exam by logging into eLearn security's interface and selecting start exam once you start this exam you'll get an email sent to your email address and you'll also be able to download the exam packet in a dot raw format so if you're using linux as your primary host os you'll want to have something like unrar installed so you can extract that I think 7-Zip will do it on Windows and there's also WinRAR as well if you choose to do it that way. This exam packet contains some stuff that you will need for the exam. I'm not gonna disclose everything, but I will say that it does include the terms of engagement. And this is a very important document that I highly suggest that you read over multiple times in great detail and think about if you and go back and look over if you ever get stuck during the exam. You'll also download a .ovpn file, which is an OpenVPN file that lets you connect to the remote lab environment for this exam. This exam consists of 20 questions. They are all multiple choice and your answers will be found within the lab environment, which you are pretty much required to hack into and exploit to figure out the answers to all these questions. It's not a capture the flag based exam, so you're not just going to get one file off each machine, but you're rather gathering information through the exploitation of these machines to use to answer the multiple choice questions. The questions themselves can sometimes help you in determining your attack vector for some machines within the exam, so that is worth noting. One of the biggest takeaways that I had from taking this exam is do not let yourself get hyper-focused on exploiting one single box. If you cannot exploit a machine within about 30 minutes to an hour at most, then just take a step back look at everything else, maybe read the terms of engagement again. If it's one of the last machines that you have to exploit or something, maybe just go off and do something else. Go work out. That, I mean, that's what I I did during the exam um, because I like working out, but maybe it's not working out for you. Maybe it's something else, but just go do something that takes your mind off of it, gets you up off the computer, and then come back later with a fresh mind to tackle that machine. Keeping a broad overview in your mind of everything you're doing and not getting pigeonholed into one machine is really something that I think as a 
penetration tester you have to learn it's something that this exam definitely helped teach me when I was taking it as for your client environment so what you're using to take this exam I would recommend using Linux um, you can use Kali Linux there's parrot security OS um, there's black arch you can really use any one of the big three distributions of pen testing distributions of Linux you just need an OS that has all those tools available so that way you can use whichever ones you need to during this assessment you can run this in a VM or you can run it bare metal like I did um, either way is fine you're not gonna really have to do any super GPU or CPU intensive tasks so if your computer isn't the best computer don't worry you should be good for this exam now that we've pretty much covered everything the exam goes over I want to talk a bit about the training so I got this exam back in August of 2020 before they switched to the INE subscription based model I got it on sale which was really nice and the training consisted of videos with pdf slides that you could go through and look at etc just having general course material and then it had hera labs which is the lab software that they use um, so they had like labs that you connect to similar to hack the box with the .ovpn file you'd remote in and you could do whatever you needed to for that lab and they also had pdf lab solution guides if you ever got stuck and needed help with the lab however now they moved over to a subscription based model which is now 750 dollars a year came down from two thousand dollars a year previously using a company called INE so now ER security themselves is purely a certification provider and does not provide training INE does that but that seven hundred fifty dollars gets you access to all the training for any certifications that you want although you still have to pay the separate four hundred dollars for the certification I do believe though if you get the yearly pass of INE that you can get half off one of these certifications so that could save you about two hundred dollars if you decide to do that my recommendation for taking this certification if you're really interested in pen testing but you haven't really had any experience before this certification is perfect for you ignore the certified ethical hacker exam as that's just horrible especially the ANSI version that's the one I'm really talking about here the ANSI certified ethical hacker is just horrible compared to the ER security junior penetration tester exam however if you have to take it for the DoD 8570 compliance. I have a review up here if you want to check that out. I pretty much recommend the EJPT in that video as well. But nonetheless, this exam is really great, and I recommend that you do this exam and buy the INE one year training pass. Then after that, you can do some hack the box and try hack me after you complete this exam, and then use the INE materials to study for the EC. PPT exam, which is the ERN Security Certified Professional Penetration Tester exam. You could probably get both of these done within a year's time frame, so I would highly recommend that you do that just because of the cost savings that could be used by just doing them both within the one year subscription time frame. After that, you could proceed to something like the Office of Security Certified Professional Certification from Office of Security, which is a little more time-based and intensive as far as it's only 24 hours long to hack everything and 24 hours to write a report. And it's a little more stressful from what I've heard, but once you've completed the EJPT and the ECPPT, you should be good to go as far as taking the PWK course and the Office of Security Certified Professional certification if you're a beginner in this field i highly recommend the ejpt i love the exam i loved the experience that i had taking this exam and the fact that it's a pretty low pressure exam as far as time is concerned i am new to the penetration testing realm and ethical hacking realm so i'm not the most experienced so i pretty much will probably have somewhat of the same experience level going into this exam you will have if you've just done the training and just a few other things anyways that's all for today's video if you like this video please feel free to leave a like subscribe to the channel if you aren't already also me and my brother are going to start by doing our podcast the big bro security show and i'm going to be putting it on this channel this time where we cover the weekly cybersecurity news and anything else that we've been up to i'm tao and i'll see you in the next video Thank <laughs> you.